Hey tramps! Hello! Today we're going to be looking at some more cheap Chinese shit. Um, I have, as some of you may know, have a lovely bike that has uh, some LED strip lights mounted on it. So I look like something out of Tron when I'm cycling around. And to power those lights, I need a relatively hefty battery. It needs to be 12 volts. Uh, so that I can, um, well, cycle for about an hour or longer without needing to recharge and without the lights dying. Um, so I thought I would try out another battery pack. Having previously bought a, quote, 13,000 milliamp hour battery pack and found out that the cells inside were full of sand. Well, all but three were. So I thought, hey, I know, if I... If the 13,000 milliamp package actually only contained three cells, which were real and the rest were full of sand, I wonder if this one, the 50,000 milliamp hour 12 volt battery pack, might contain, I don't know, maybe six if I'm lucky, which, you know, that would be, that'll be enough of a battery pack to use. So um, I went ahead and I bought this, and I think this cost me about 20 quid. Uh, it came from AliExpress, and it claims to be made by Samsung, yeah? Uh, I also claim to be a Premier League footballer. Anyway, um, what you get for your 20 English pounds is uh, the dual pigtail um, connected to the battery, one's for charging and one's for supplying power to whatever you want to supply uh, power to, and this fetching, excuse my hand, this fetching power supply, which I have labelled, um, which is not exactly very heavy, um, and it comes in EU plug only, even though uh, you say you want it in UK plug, well, tough, you get your EU plug. Now, what I've done is I have actually broken this out um, with a terminal block here and added a couple of little spur wires because I, that's to allow me to measure it. But, you know, it does it does work. It does charge it. Now, um, if we just go on to the body of this device a bit more, so it is a rec or cuboid shape, blue shrink wrap plastic. Uh, it's got your two pigtails there. It's got this little base switch on here, which when you switch it on, oh, look, you get a little red light, and you do indeed get output from here when it's switched on. So, you know, that switch is doing something. Uh, and then the only other distinguishing, or better turn it off actually, because, you know, we don't want to waste energy. We don't know how much energy is in here, do we? Because I'm not sure it's 50 milliamp hours. Um, so if we have a look at what's written on the front, this is Samsung lithium battery pack. Uh, it The battery model is, uh, there it is, battery model, Samsung INR 18650. Uh, which I think is some garbled um, reference to the most common lithium ion cells that you find. Voltage ca capacity, uh, they obviously run out of A's, um, is 12 volts slash 50 amp hours. 50,000 50, milliamp hours is the same as 50 amp hours. Uh, data manufacturer is August 2021. Uh, and then the EU is responsible for... K-E-L-I. Now, I'm assuming the L-I is the uh, element, element symbol for lithium. K-E, well, that would be kelvolinium, I think, which is a theoretical element uh, that doesn't actually exist because you can only make it in nuclear reactors and it only lasts for fractions of a millisecond, even if you could make it. So um, apparently the EU is responsible for all the lithium in the world and the kelvinium for the brief moments it exists. Lots of symbols. So this must indeed be safe, um, including, I don't even know why they've got these here, but apparently it was made in a factory. So before we rip this to shreds and see what's inside it, I just want to do a couple of quick measurements on our glorious power supply. So... What I've done is I have spurred out the, uh, I've basically split the cable, I've connected it together again with these um, terminal blocks, so I can then just tap off um, a couple of leads here. And what I've got up here is my uh, multimeter. Uh, this is a Hantec uh, 
4202. Brilliant entry level. Did I say multimeter? I mean oscilloscope. Uh, brilliant entry level sort of entry mid range uh, oscilloscope. So what I've got is I'm going to connect up uh, this to. Oh, I'll just look over the screen there to the positive. Uh, we'll connect its reference to the negative. I mean, I could connect it to ground, but this is double insulated, so that's not exactly going to be um, terribly fair. Okay, so that's connected up there. Now let's plug this in. I've had to use an adapter here because I am in the UK. Could you tell by my voice? Um, here we are. So that's connected to my multimeter probe. And then over on the oscilloscope, this is what I've got. So what I've done is I've set the uh, I've set the scope so it's on what's AC mode, so um, I can look at the noise basically. And this is what the power supply, which is now glowing green, is uh, for the right cable is outputting uh, while it's not under load. And as you can see, you've got these spikes that are basically going up to the entire top of the screen, and it's measuring a peak to peak. Uh, voltage which is this bit here of you know 1.6 1.7 volts now that's a 12 volt supply so you know we're looking at something like 15 percent ripple on that there's there's this, these spurious peaks uh, transient peaks that are more than well, about 15 percent of the supply voltage which is pretty bad but this is not a fair test because this this power supply is what we call floating there's basically well there is a bit of load on it it's the it's the load of this um, oscilloscope, which is which is about um, I think it's a ten meg ohm uh, resistor in there. So you know that's not a real load. So let's see how it performs if we put a load on it. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to connect it up to the charging port here. Uh, excuse my crappy camera skills, and excuse my crappy microphone skills as well. It's quite hard to I I, tr I did I did radio in the past, right? We don't normally have to watch a video while we're doing radio. I'm also right-handed and this is my left hand. So it's kind of flapping, get in, it's flapping in the breeze. Right, okay, so that's now under load and we know uh, it's under load because the light is on and if I flick it onto one, you'll see that, that what was a green light is now going red. Okay, so far so good. We have, let's get this better, this connection is crap. We have uh, our battery pack, which wasn't fully charged, now charging off its the supply that came with it. And let's have a look to see uh, what the noise figure is like. So we just make sure that's connected again. And, oh, and it's even worse. So not only have we got the same sort of, uh, what, 10 to 15 percent ripple there's now a lot more of it so this 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 power supply is is lacking is lacking in the filtering department okay fine so and i'll just what i'll do is i'll put my thumb on here uh, and i'll switch it off and you'll see what will happen ready i'm going to switch it off now and you can see now that uh, we go back to the floating voltage ripple and if I turn this off, just to prove that this is the, the um, thing going off, just to prove that this is just not general noise. There is a bit of noise in the room. These little spikes are actually coming off my um, cheap Chinese LED uh, <laughs> lights that I've got on an angle poise. Anyway, um, so yeah, the, this, this clearly is a rubbish power supply. Okay, so that's that bit done. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look inside this because I don't think... Uh, 50,000 milliamp hours is quite accurate. In fact, I'm going to prove this to you. Right, so do we actually think that this humble battery pack is anywhere close to 50,000 milliamp hours? Well, I can investigate this because maths can help us. You see, there's, at the moment, the current state-of-the-art lithium-ion batteries uh, have uh, the kind of that you might find in a high-end uh, electric vehicle like a Tesla, have an energy density approaching 265 watt-hours per kilogram. So in other words, if you get a kilogram of battery and you run it at, uh, and you, you draw 265 watts of power from it, 
that one kilogram of battery could supply that 265 watts for an hour. Or another way of thinking about it is if you have, let's just turn off the oscilloscope's noisy. Uh, if Another way of thinking about it is if you have um, a one watt load, uh, you could, off one kilogram of battery, run that one watt load for 265 hours. So that kind of, that's how it works, yeah? Um, now, the you can convert voltage and uh, amps into watts very easily. Uh, if you remember the equation power equals current times by volts, well, um, you can convert current into uh, total capacity of a power supply by adding time in there. Um, so a power times a time is the same as a current times a time times a voltage. So if we have 50 milliamp hours, sorry, 50 amp hours or 50,000 milliamp hours, uh, and we multiply it by the voltage this battery runs at, which is 12 volts here, then we will get its capacity in uh, milliwatt hours, which is 600,000 milliwatt hours. Okay, fine, easy, straightforward, uh, which is the same as 600 watt hours. So if to a battery that's capable of supplying 265 watt hours at the pinnacle of lithium ion technology that's available commercially today, if a battery like that um, would weigh one kilogram, then a battery capable of supplying 600 watt hours, not 265, 600 watt hours should be, should weigh either the same as or greater than 600 divided by 265 which is 2.26 kilograms or 2,260 grams. Because if a kilogram gives you 265 watts and that's the most efficient, most energy dense battery we can get, we can get in today's um, commercial world, then to get 600, we're going to need multiple kilograms of battery, right? Okay, so this battery claims to contain 600 watt hours. So this means this thing should weigh at least 2.26 kilograms. If it weighs more than that, that's okay actually, because it just means that perhaps the battery technology is not quite as energy dense as this. And for, you know, cheap overseas battery packs, it, we wouldn't really be realistically expecting energy densities as high as this. So if this genuinely does 50,000 milliamp hours at 12 volts, it should weigh at least 2.26 kilograms. Okay, so why don't we bring some scales in? So let's get some scales here. Just put that over there. Remember, I'll just put this on screen so you can still see it. That's our, can you still see that? Uh, yeah, that's our, this is our target number there. Okay, so there's my scales. Let's zero them. Okay, here we go. Well, maybe it's the cables. So let's just just slightly move them on. No, no, hang on, get on, get on. Everything I want, everything on that scale. Three hundred and forty-one grams. Three hundred and forty-one grams. For this claim of fifty thousand milliamp hours to be real, we needed at least. 2,260 grams, and we have got 341 grams. In other words, we have about uh, a seventh of the weight that we would expect for the claimed energy density or the claimed capacity of 50,000 milliamp hours. So, in other words, um, we have one, there is one of two possibilities. Possibility number one, that I am holding in my hands the greatest invention that uh, this decade has ever seen. Because this would be energy density seven times what uh, the batteries that we're putting in the top end electric vehicles is. This would be pretty revolutionary because it means that you're holding... Um, a, a energy that's something that's so energy dense that's in a rechargeable battery form, we could realistically store uh, energy from like solar cells and from 
uh, wind turbines in this so that renewable energies could supply so much more of our electric grid demand this this would this would answer an awful lot of our dependency on fossil fuels if this technology genuinely is seven times the energy density of what the top batteries available on the market is so that's option number one that's possibility number one that i'm holding in my hands something groundbreaking option or possibility number two is that this figure is a load of bullshit what do you think i think we'll find out okay so uh this genuinely is the first time I've ever opened one of these. This could go horribly wrong. If I puncture a lithium iron cell, the thing's probably going to smoke and catch fire. Fortunately, I do have a fire extinguisher around. And if this genuinely is that energy density, I better tread very carefully because this thing will have more energy than about 10 hand grenades in it. Um, just for comparison, a typical laptop battery, uh, which generally runs at a higher voltage, usually about 19 volts or 18 volts, they're usually about 4,500 uh, or 5,000 um, milliamp hours. Is that right? I think they are, yeah. So this is apparently more energy dense than that. Right, how do we get into this thing? So first, of, first things first, let's cut off the shrink wrap. So inside the blue parcel tape, we have a uh, box. And oh, look at this. Special treat for you guys. Looks like there is a load of um, builder's foam in here, I think. Yeah. It's just foam. I think this is just ord the ordinary expanding foam that you tend to get. Um, okay. This looks like... The whole thing is just glued together uh, with the expanding foam. I hope this isn't corrosive. Uh, if it is, I'm boned, but I, 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 I'm going to take a guess and say it's not. Okay, so there we are. We're now looking at the guts of it. It might look like meringue, but I can tell you now it's not as tasty as that. Okay, so um, th that's a lot of volume that has been filled up with not a lot of stuff. Just going to take a still of that. Okay, here we go. So, how are we going to just peel? I mean, this. There we go. Okay, okay. We we now now we're in business. So, we have got what looks like um, was well, foam, and I think the main purpose of this foam isn't necessarily to shock absorb these batteries. I think it is to um, to basically bulk the unit out and make it seem like there's there's a lot more. Now, these are the uh, oh, sh be careful. I'm um, bending the the, the tab. So these are lithium ion cells, and they look like re legit lithium ion cells. Um, the 18650s. Oh look, if we peel back the foam more. Christ, what have you done? If we peel back the foam more, what do we get? Oh, look at that. Lovely circuit boards. Now, I'm being quite careful here because genuinely these, these are quite dangerous. You um, you mustn't ever connect these directly up to uh, a charging voltage because what you'll find is you'll overcharge them and they're just going to explode on you. Um, and they, these are capable of outputting quite a hell of a lot of current. So... What you do is you protect the cells with um, a circuit board, and the circuit board uh, has got a couple of functions. One, when they're sorry, one when they're charging, um, the, the the it senses the voltage, and then when they reach a certain voltage, it uh, stops the charging, so it protects them from overcharging. And then when they are done, when they when they you are drawing from them, 
um, when the voltage drops below a certain amount, it then shuts it off. So, uh, so that stops you from over depleting the batteries because what happens is you get a bit of chemistry change inside the batteries, which um, alters the. You, you get these little nasty uh, metal spurs and growths and things coming off the electrodes. So what we've got here is a load of wasted space from foam, a, uh, I was going to say an enclosure, but I think that's being a bit bloody generous, to be honest, because this is just five, it was, uh, six faces of loose plastic held together with blue parcel tape. I mean, if you were to get a primary school kid and ask them to create a, a box, this is the kind of thing that they they would do. Um, have you not heard of a net? Have you not heard of um, ABS boxes? No, no, no. We're just going to botch together something. Now, this is protecting cells here, high energy cells. So it's not what i'd really expect and and this was so this was um sold as an electric bike battery pack imagine if you've uh, had an accident and you, your bike tipped over and you just landed on top of the battery pack and the only thing here protecting these cells was this flimsy piece of crap on one side uh, sorry on so this flimsy piece of crap and some foam on one side i i i think we're we're likely to see some fireworks Okay, so now let's have a look at the wonders we have here. Now, these circuits, I've seen these before. Let me just get the shite off it. I've got to, again, be, actually, why am I using a conductive thing? Let's, let's use something that is, uh, that is an insulator. Right, okay, I've got my... I don't use this to clean my teeth with. Um, I use this to... <laughs> to, to brush down circuit boards, and it, it's black because um, I had an oops the other day and uh, flames leapt off the board and I had to get rid of some carbon. So anyway, here we go. All right, let's get this off. So this is, I've seen these before. This is like a standard charging circuit and it usually has, you usually get four tabs. Uh, and what they do is they tap the various points of um, the battery cells. And usually what you have is you have a uh, batteries in stacked in series um and then the 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 powerpoint i tell you what let me just show you what you do is you got hang on you'll have batteries that, that are like this uh so you let's say you've got three batteries like that and then you will have uh, a, a, a the circuit let's just make it a black box um, that will have these various tap points here. Um, so there are your four tap points there. So that's a, these, these are your batteries here. That's one battery. That's another battery. That's another battery. This is your charging circuit. And what it's doing is it's monitoring the voltage across each of those batteries so it knows when to shut them off for charging or on for charging. And, of course, uh, it will have a separate um, input here from the charging circuit. So this is where your 12 volt from your charger comes. And then it can say, okay, right, what do we need to do with these batteries? Now, the more observant amongst you will notice that actually we've got six cells in here. Um, so actually probably what's happening is we've probably got uh, batteries in parallel. So we've probably got something that looks like this. Um, and they can be different orientations. So um, looks like these two are facing the same way. Can you see that? Sorry, I'm terrible at... Yeah. Okay, so it looks like... Hang on. All right, let's get that shy out of the way because that's doing nobody any favours and never did uh, and never could. Right, so there's our putative circuit. Ugh, I've got this foam everywhere. Uh, right, let's try not to blow stuff up, he says. So, we've got... Uh, get my pointy stick. 
these batteries are in the same orientation, these two. These batteries are in the same orientation, which is opposite that. And these batteries are in the same orientation. And if you look at the bottom here, if you can see that, we've they're coupled together there, they're coupled together there, they're coupled together there. There's a break here, and if we flip it over, you've got the opposite pattern. These two are coupled together here, they're coupled together there, they're coupled together there. And can you see how the middle set is flipped over? I suspect that's to, to save the... Um, yeah, to save the amount of uh, strips they have to use. So it does look like it is this structure. Two batteries here, which would be these two. These two middle batteries here, which would be these two. And these two bottom batteries here, which would be these two. And then you've got these four tap points. Uh, so for the sake of argument, let's just say, so that's the positive end. So that's tap point here is probably that one. This tap point here will be that one. Uh, right, where do we go next? It will be this tap point here is that one. And finally, this tap point here is that one. And this is our charging circuit. Okay, great. So we know now that there are six cells in here and they all do seem to be genuine cells. Um, there are no markings on them whatsoever. Now, Theoretically, if I were to meter across these cells, we will be able to see what voltage they are. Now, if we've got uh, three in series and two in parallel, um, well, we're expecting, if this, if this is genuinely 12 volts, we're expecting these to be close to four volts. There may be some magic going on in this circuit which can convert, say, a, a 10 volts up to 12 volts or something. Um, but the point is is that we should be seeing across these, these batteries a typical lithium-ion cell voltage, which is about 3.7 to 4 volts. So if I get my bomb-proof multimeter in here... Um, oh, crikey, what have I connected to this? This is what happens when you don't plan your videos. This looks like a rat's nest. What have we got here? Okay. Looks like I've been having some fun. Uh, right, so let's just get rid of that. We don't need that one. Get off you. Slightly strange smell. I think it's the foam. Nothing's burning, though. All right, here we go. So that... Switch it round to voltage and just make sure I've got it on voltage mode because if I've got this on current mode, it, it's not going to like it. So, can you see that all right? Good. So we connect that to there, this to there, and we're expecting about 3.7. And we have 3. Point... Oh, come on, Mike, you can't. 3.9, so that's a mostly charged um, lithium ion cell. So yes, these, these two are real. Uh, okay, let's do it across this next set, which will be uh, this is the negative, and this is the positive. Uh, oh, about four volts, that one. It's jumping all over the place. Probably because the circuit's doing funny things. Uh, and then finally, we've got... Oh, Jesus. Finally, we've got 3.8 volts. Okay, so this is indeed the circuit. This is definitely the circuit. It is um, six cells configured in pairs, parallel pairs, stacked three in series. Um, so that should give us a total voltage across the lot of something close to 12 volts, but it won't quite be 12 volts. 11.8. Cool. Okay. So next step. Oh, look at that. I've broken. I've balked it. I've balked it. I was going to say my next step is to, um, is to fire it up, but I don't know if I'm going to have any luck with the common out. 
Uh, so, oh look what they've done here. They've got this is the this is the little LED, um, and it looks like it's connected. Well, where, where, hang on, where did this come from then? Did it come from here? Because that would be bonkers. Um, anyway, it's connected. There's a resistor in here. So if we... Oh, they do like the heat shrink, don't they? I mean, I'm guessing at 12 volts, we're looking at 680 ohm resistor. It might be a bit higher. It might be... Uh, it might be um, a 1K resistor. All right, let's just ping that off. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I live a rock and roll lifestyle, right? Because um, what what better things would you want to do on a Friday night than, you know, you, you, you could be... Imagine all the things you could be doing. You've got a weekend ahead and uh, it's Friday night. You're excited for a weekend. And I can think of nothing better to do than dissecting heat shrink to work out what the value of this resistor is. Ready? There we go. So there's the little resistor that's protecting the LED. And uh, this is a four band type. And we have got, I can't even see that color there. So this looks to me like it is a brown, which is a one. And then a green, which is a five, and then a red, which is two, but uh, the, the band is a mul the third band's a multiplier. So I think this is one, five, and then two zeros, zero, zero. So this is a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor. I could prove this if you want. Do you want to, do you, do you want to prove this? Okay, all right, go on then, why not? Right, flip the multimeter rounds. Am I still within... The screen, connect that up to one side of the resistor, shut up LED. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna go bad. <sighs> right, uh where's the other bit? It's because I was connected to the um Yeah, don't do that. Good job that I chose the, the positive one because I could have shorted that. That would have been a lot of fun. Anyway, connect that up to the other side of the resistor, and my multimeter will put a little bit of current through there, and then it will work out what on earth this resistor value is. There you go. I said it was 1.5K. The multimeter says, so 1.5K, so that's 1,500. Our multimeter, our survey says 1,460. There you go. That's how you read resistors. Um, you're very welcome. Um, next, uh, the exam at the end of term will be on how to waste your life dicking around with cheap Chinese electronics. So, um, one last thing to do, and that is to work out what the maximum possible capacity of this rig is, given that we know it has got six of these cells in, in with two in parallel. So, um, when you put batteries in parallel, you... The voltage stays the same and you add their capacity together. It's acting like one big fat battery. When you put them in series, the capacity stays the same, but the voltage doubles. So it's like a longer battery, a more powerful battery. So we know they're about four volts each and we stack three on top of each other to get the 12 volts. Three times four is 12. And we've got two in parallel. So the capacity of this rig is at absolute maximum two of these cells. Now I'm going to pause and do some Googling and see what the latest maximum capacity of these cells actually is. So the maximum capacity that you find of one of these batteries at its rated four volts is uh, 3,600 milliamp hours. So immediately you can see that this 
50 milliamp hour claim is bullshit because um, we've got a total of six batteries here, right? We know that there are only, there are only two of them are connected in parallel. Um, and, you know, there's only they're, they're, that's the maximum width is two batteries, yeah? Which means the maximum capacity possibly of this rig, it's 12 volts, is just simply that times two, which is equal to 7.2. Milliamp hour, or amp hours. So, and this assumes that these are high end. These 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 are high end lithium eighteen six fifty cells. Um, many have capacities down to just two thousand. So, what is claimed to be fifty thousand milliamp hours is at the absolute maximum, based upon the technology of these cells, actually only 7,200 milliamp hours or 7.2 amp hours. Which is a shame, because eerily, that's about a seventh of that, which is what we calculated the maximum possible energy density is. Now, I suspect if I were to do a full charge uh, discharge cycle with these, I would confirm that these are indeed a lot less than um, 3,600 milliamp hours. I, I would say they're between two and a half and three. Um, so the moral of the story is, when, when you buy stuff like this um, from China, batteries are about the worst thing that you can buy from China because you are going to get lied to. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of exaggeration of capacities because they just have to print the number on there. There's a lot of um, brand fraud going on. There's no way this was made by Samsung. The batteries, Samsung do sometimes make cells, I think, but the Samsung cells always have something printed on them saying that they're Samsung. These have got nothing printed on them. These are just, yeah, they're just blank. Um, so yeah, when you buy stuff, just it, it, from China, ignore it. Don't believe, just do not believe this. And I, I did actually write out to the manufacturer uh, and asked what cells are inside your battery pack, and they said they are lithium eighteen six fifties. I then asked the question, well, how many have you got in there? Uh, and they didn't answer. So then I asked the question, can you please confirm that the capacity is indeed? 50,000 milliamp hours at 12 volts and they wrote back to say yes they can confirm that bullshit it's not at absolute most the capacity of this is 7200 um, milliamp hours right rant over that's the end of this thing um, what I think I'm going to do now is steal this useful circuit and slap it on a much more impressive battery pack. Bye!